Past videos showed us that an atom's protons in its nucleus tells us its atomic number, or what kind of atom it is. But most of an atom's mass comes from its protons and neutrons, which are also found in the nucleus. For example, helium has two protons weighing two. And because the overall mass is four, the neutrons must also weigh two. So there must be two neutrons, because each weighs one. Two plus two equals four. Protons plus neutrons equal the overall mass. That is, the relative atomic mass. To revise this, check the video Relative Atomic Mass 6. Atomic mass equals protons plus neutrons. So far, so good. Lithium's a bit trickier. It's got three protons, weighing three, but its atomic mass is 6.9. Does that mean it has 3.9 neutrons in its nucleus? But neutrons can't come in fractions. It's got to be either three neutrons or four neutrons. What's going on here? Can you think of anything? In nature, a real lump of lithium would be made of many, many lithium atoms. All with three protons. Some of these have three neutrons, but other lithium atoms have four. The atom with three protons and three neutrons weighs six on the atomic mass scale. The atom with three protons and four neutrons weighs seven. This means that the average atomic mass is somewhere between six and seven. That's why it's 6.9. When atoms of the same kind have a different number of neutrons, we call them isotopes. So we can say that isotopes are atoms with the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. To tell them apart, scientists write the left isotope, lithium-6, and the right isotope, lithium-7. This number is called the mass number, and is just the sum of the protons and neutrons. Because we can only have a whole number of protons and neutrons, the mass number is always a whole number. Three plus three equals six. And three plus four equals seven. The isotope can also be written with its mass number at the top left of its symbol. Very sciencey looking. These mass numbers are identifiers for each isotope, so we can tell them apart. But aren't these two lithiums different kinds of atoms, if they have a different number of neutrons? Maybe one's a gas and the other's a solid. No, both nuclei have three protons, so both have an atomic number of three, making them both lithium. If we separate the isotopes into one bit all made of lithium-6 atoms and the other bit all made of lithium-7 atoms, we could hardly tell them apart. They'd both be soft and shiny like lithium. 
and both explode in water like lithium because they both are lithium. The lithium-6 lump will just be a tad lighter than the lithium-7 lump. And explode in water a tad faster than lithium-7 because its lighter atoms can move more quickly. But overall, they're like almost identical twins. Lithium is special because it's the lightest metal in the universe. Lithium being so light means that lithium batteries are light, which is great for electric cars and phones. No lead batteries, please. Why is the actual relative atomic mass of lithium 6.9? Why closer to 7 than to 6? Wow! In nature, there are more lithium-7 than lithium-6 atoms. 92 out of every 100 lithium atoms are lithium-7 and only eight are lithium-6. So its average mass is closer to seven than to six. And because about nine-tenths of lithium atoms are lithium-7, it leans nine-tenths of the way between six and seven. That's why it's 6.9. The relative atomic mass is the average mass of all the isotopes found in nature, expressed as a ratio to the mass of a carbon atom taken as 12. The idea of comparing the atom's mass to a carbon's is covered in the earlier video called Relative Atomic Mass 4, How Scientists Killed You. This definition of relative atomic mass also means that its value will be closer to the most common isotope's mass. Remember, the term atomic weight can also be used. The number of terms with slightly different meanings can get a bit confusing, so we've made a different video to clarify the differences between them. If you Google lithium, you'll find that it has 10 isotopes, each with three protons, but a different number of neutrons. If we add the protons and neutrons together, we'll get the mass number of each isotope. For example, lithium-11 has three protons and eight neutrons. But most of lithium's isotopes fall apart quickly, throwing out subatomic particles and radiation. And then they change into another isotope, or maybe even a different kind of atom. Scientists call these unstable ones radioactive isotopes, or radioisotopes. Some only last for a billion trillionth of a second. The time taken for radioisotopes to disintegrate is measured by their half-lives, and we'll explain that in another video. Only lithium-6 and 7 are counted as stable isotopes of lithium. Scientists have detected over 3,000 radioisotopes of all the different kinds of atoms in the world, most of which have been made artificially in the lab. Of these, only 252 are stable. And the winner of the most stable isotopes contest is... Tin! with a whopping 10 stable isotopes. Congratulations, Stan. 
Hang on, it's also got another 29 radioisotopes with half-lives of about a year. But our contest only counts the ones that stick around for billions of years. In nature, tin's 10 stable isotopes are all mixed together, so it's more realistic to show one tin can made from all the isotopes. Separating isotopes is difficult because they're so alike. There are 26 monoisotopic elements, meaning they only have one stable isotope. And there are two elements with no stable isotopes at all, technetium and promethium. These samples are radioactive, so they don't count. We've only scratched the surface of isotopes and we'll make more videos on this amazing topic.